Hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Rachel Klein and I will be your presenter for the next 20 minutes. Uh, today we're going to be talking about the different type of adjustments you need to make in membership and donations if you use the donations module. Um, there's going to be a couple things you're kind of going to have to think through and how look at how the family is set up to figure out how to move forward to get those people split uh, into different households and then how to get them set up so they can be appropriately organized, if you will, for them to give in the future or pledge in the future and also how you want them to appear on reports. So let's jump in here. On the document itself, um, I kind of wrote up this little blurb up at the top because there, there are some decisions and different things you kind of have to consider when you have a family that's going through a divorce or a couple that's going through a divorce. Um, not only do you have to think about their giving, you have to think about their pledging. If you use giver numbers, that's going to come into play as well. And then also if there's kids involved, uh, you, there is a way for you to link the children to both parents' household. Okay, so a couple things we have to think about. Um, most of the time in church windows, when you have a couple, they are both going to be checked gives with family. All right, I'll show you where that is so you know exactly what I'm referring to. Here in donations in Manage Givers, there is a checkbox off here to the right called Gives with Family. Whenever you have a couple that you want to give together, this box has to be checked on both of them. So the couple we're going to be working with through today and the document follows is Evan and Nikki Bernard. Okay, so as you can see, they are both checked Gives with Family and they both share number 22. Okay, so the, they are, to the software, one giving unit. They're going to get one donation statement. They share one, uh, one giver number. Now, if this, if this couple is going through a divorce, when you take a person in that family and you remove them, you transfer them out, it leaves the number and it leaves the pledging on the person who is remaining in that household. Okay, so for our example, we're going to take Evan Bernard and we are going to move Evan out and put him in his own household and membership. By doing that, Evan will no longer be part of the pledge for that family and Evan will no longer have number 22. All right, now with that being said, donations, the actual donation transactions you put in on people through Enter Donations, those will stay with the individual okay so if you're familiar at all with entering donations when you're on that enter donation screen and you go to choose your giver you have to pick one person one individual you don't choose a giving unit as a whole okay so in reality the giving is going to stay with the person so any donations that were put on Evan will stay with Evan any donations that were put on Nikki will stay with Nikki the thing you will affect is the giving unit when you transfer them out. That's going to be your pledging, and that's going to be your giver number. Okay? And that's all written up at the top of the document. So if you need a little refresher on that, I tried to be as clear as possible, but it's, it's going to be up in those top couple paragraphs in the document itself. All right, now let's jump over here into membership. So first thing we're going to do is come into people, and we are going to go to the family that we need to make the adjustments to, okay? And again, we're working with Evan Bernard and Nikki Bernard. So up here in our person lookup, I'm going to go to Nikki here. All right, so as you can see on our screen, we have Evan here and Nikki down here. Now they've divorced, so we are going, we've decided based on the information we have that we are going to take Evan and we are going to remove him from this family and we're going to put him in his own family or his own household. Okay. Now to do that, we're going to highlight Evan so we see his record here on the right and all his information. And we are going to come over here and hit this transfer individual button. Now after I hit transfer, I want to make sure it says new family. And I'm going to come over here to the right, and I'm going to choose his fam family category. So he's still a member, so I'm going to choose member. But I'm going to update his mailing label for his new household here, and it's just going to have his name. 
If you know their new address, hit the plus sign and pop in that new address. If you don't know it, that's okay. You can come back to it later. The only thing you are required to put in on this screen, obviously their family category, but it's their mailing label. Okay, so essentially two things are all you have to have filled in before you can move forward. If you have the phone number, if you know the mailing code, definitely fill those things in now. And then I'm going to say OK. It's basically going to pick up Evan's record, it's going to move it, and it's going to plop him into his own household. Okay, you are going to get this informative box. This is not an error. This is just letting you know that there are some things that you should consider with moving or transferring someone out. So I also have a couple extra things written on the document. You need to consider making changes to the new family and the old family, their title, their mailing label, their family relation, their marital status, marriage date, and even their family photo. So if you upload family photos in church windows, you may want to consider updating a new photo or deleting it until you can get a new photo. Also, membership is completely customizable. Okay, so in my document and on that screen we just saw, it's giving you suggestions. You may have more fields that you need to change because you've created more customizable fields. Or you may have less. Either way, it's okay, but you really just need to make sure you go through each field and you clean up the corresponding fields. Okay? So Evan is out. Now we're back in the first or the, the original household, if you will. There are all several things, again, that I just read you that we have to change or update. So first thing I'm going to notice over here on the left is the mailing label. It still lists them as a couple. I'm going to need to remove this. So I'm just going to put in Nikki Bernard. Now you can put a Ms. You can, you can set it up however you want to. I am going to come over here and change the title to Ms. Her first name, her last name for now is still the same. Maybe she changes her name. Maybe she gets remarried. Whatever it might be, you can always come in and change the last name later. Now we're going to look down here in the individual fields. There are a few things that we need to get cleaned up here. Her status code is still the same, but we're going to change her family relation. We will change her to single parent. Again, these fields are customizable, so you might want to pick something different. It's fine. Just stay consistent with whatever you choose. Directory report order. This definitely needs to be updated. This should be primary. Every household should have a primary person in it and should only have one primary. Let's keep looking down through our list. Marital status. We're going to change this to divorced. And then down here, we have a marriage date couple options. You can completely remove this marriage date if you want to. I'm going to copy it before I clear it. And then I'm going to come up here to my comments tab. And I'm going to paste that date in here. And then I'm just going to say was married to Evan Bernard. Completely optional. It is up to you if you wish to move data to the comments field. All right, let's get back to Nikki. We removed the marriage date. We changed the marital status. Anything else over here, I'm not going to adjust. Again, here's that giver number we saw in Manage Givers and Donations. She still has 22 because she's remained in the household. Okay, so I am done changing Nikki. Let's go look at Evan because we do have some information we are going to have to change on him as well. Evan Bernard, his mailing label is fine because we just changed that. Again, if you come up with an address or a phone number, you can come back in and put that in at any time. His first name and last name are still good. Title's great. But we do need to come down into these individual fields and make some changes. So family relation, I'm going to change it to single parent. He was the primary in his original household, so that came over with him, so I don't need to change that. Keep coming down through the list. Marital status, I'm going to put divorce there. Marriage date, I'll remove. Again, if you want to copy it, move it to the comments tab, you can. Keep looking down the list. Everything else looks good. But now I see, because we took him out of the family, he doesn't have a giver number. So you can leave him without a giver number. That's no big deal. But if you want to add a giver number, you can easily do that here by hitting the teal number sign. And that is going to open you up to the Manage Numbers screen from donations. 
Okay, at this point you can hit add new number. I'm going to give them 21 because I checked and made sure that was available. Give them a start date for the first of the year or you could change it to whatever date you wish. I'm going to say okay. So now Mr. Evan Bernard has number 21 as of the first of the year. Okay. So that is how you get a number back on him. Now let's talk about linking the kids. So for a long time in church windows, you didn't have the ability to link people to more than one family or more than one household. A couple years ago, we made that feature available. I still sometimes feel like people don't really know that's an option, but I want to show you how to do that. So staying on Evan's record, you can see in the lower left here, it's just him and his household right now. But we can easily link his children here. So what we'll do up here at the top, we go to this other tab, link unlink a child to this family. I'm going to click that. And right here, I search for the people that need to be joined. So Eric is his son. I'm going to choose Eric in the list and I'm going to click link child to family. So here's Eric Bernard now and it's showing his original family, which is with his mom, Nikki. And then I'm going to come here, we're going to go to Stuart, we're going to link child to family, and now we have Eric and Stuart from Nikki Bernard's family, but are now a part of Evan. So they're with their mom and they're with their dad. So back here on the first tab, you can see we have Evan, Stuart, and Eric as well. Okay. Handy trick here, if you click this little house, it will jump you over to where their original or their P for primary household is with their mom. Okay. Pretty tricky thing there. Now, one other thing I want to show you before we talk about donations. If there is a family photo you need to change, over here on the left, you just go to this photo tab. And you can see, this is a really old picture, but you can see there's a family here. You can clear it out or you can add a new one if you have an updated photo, or you can leave it as is, but just something to consider, okay? All right, so that is a good overview of what you need to consider doing over in membership to get uh, the couple separated. Now let's talk about some things in donations to consider. As I said in the beginning, Giving is going to stay with the person. So even though you move someone out, the giving, again, is going to still stay on that individual record. But there might be an instance where you still need to move some giving, okay? If that is the case, you can do so easily up here under givers and then transfer donations. So anytime you need to move giving from one person to another, transfer donations is going to be your best bet. So if I just go here and I choose Nikki, I want to say take this one $5 gift off Nikki and I want to put it over on Evan. You can easily do that by coming in here, selecting the from giver or who you're taking the giving away from and moving it to the to giver on the right. Again, I'm not saying you have to do this, but if you find or the couple comes to you and says we need to split up some of our giving, this is going to be the easiest place for you to go in and do that. All right, last thing I wanted to talk to you about is going to be pledging. Okay, so again, pledging, like a giver number, is going to be tied to the giving unit. So if we come in here and we look at our pledge for 2022, you can see down here that Ms. Nikki Bernard has a monthly pledge of $300, okay? And this is her with number 22. So this was the family's pledge prior to when we split them out. So when we went in and we changed that mailing label from Mr. and Mrs., and we just changed it to Nikki, Ms. Nikki, that's the name we're seeing here, okay? So this is just Nikki's family because Evan is now part of a separate family. So you may need to come in here and make some changes, okay? Maybe Nikki decides she's unable to make the or continue to make the pledge. So you can reduce the amount. You could end it prior to, you could end it today if you wanted to. Or you could come over here to the right, use the minus sign and remove it completely, okay? Or let's say Nikki's going to hold true to what she pledged. So we don't need to change anything for Nikki. But let's say Evan came to us and Evan wants to make a pledge. So we would come in here 
and we would come down to Mr. Evan Bernard. Let's say he wants to pledge $500 a month. We will choose that. We'll hit Add Giver to Campaign. And now we have a pledge for Evan and we have a pledge for Nikki, okay? Because the software sees them as two separate giving units because we separated them with their households, okay? So keep in mind, pledging, I, there is a webinar out on pledging for how to make changes and adjustments to pledges. If you need more help with this screen, head to the Resource Center. You can watch it there. But honestly, it's pretty, pretty straightforward to come in here and make adjustments or delete or add. All right. Patty has an awesome question. It just came in. I want to touch on it. It says, does the attendance transfer over as well? when you transfer individuals. Yes, okay, so attendance is going to be per the individual. So when you're in enter attendance and you check that Evans box and then you go and check Nikki's box, by separating their households, you are not affecting their attendance at all. It is on the individual. So the attendance for Evan stays with Evan and then the attendance you put in on Nikki will stay with Nikki as well. Great question, Patty. Okay, that is everything I wanted to go over with you all today.